Hello, this is Mr. White, and this video is on simple harmonic motion. I think it's uh, one of the best examples of how trig, and specifically the sinusoid aspect of trig, can be applied to real life, but I'm going to just be very blunt with you. It's also something that traditionally students have a hard time grasping, so I'm going to try to do my best to, to get this across to you in a reasonably short video, but um, realistically, we're going to have to continue this, this discussion in class, and you'll have to come with some good uh, good questions to, to ask in class. All right, um, so let me describe simple harmonic motion like this. These are just my own words. I would describe it as any kind of oscillation or vibration or rotation, et cetera, whose motion, whose periodic motion, uh, again, that's emphasizing the fact that this is something that repeats itself um, every so often, every period, we would say. Um, Anyway, whose motion can be modeled as a sinusoid. Um, and when we say sinusoid, of course, it could be either sine or cosine. Um, so I'll leave cosine underneath. It's either one, sine or cosine. You'll find out when we do a couple examples how we'll decide between the two of them. And this is always something that applies to time. So here's a, here's a strange concept for you. Instead of x being our independent variable, time, t, is always going to be our independent variable. Think about that. We're essentially taking the sine or cosine of time. That's a strange concept. I'll just ask that you accept it for now, but um, I don't blame you if that seems very strange. Um, we're going to find that the book likes to replace b with this Greek letter omega. And students always want to call it W, and I insist it's the Greek letter omega. But I'll be honest with you, I don't really care what you use in your, in your calculations. If you want to stick with our traditional old B, you know what, that, that's a battle I'm not going to fight. If you want to use B, that's fine. If you use omega, that's fine too. Uh, but again, that's the Greek letter omega. Uh, we're going to find that uh, in these fairly simple or relatively simple examples that we do, we're not going to really worry about phase shift h. So we won't, we won't mess with that. That could come up in real life, but not in the examples and, and problems that we do. And finally, this k value, that could apply. It, it, it many times won't be there. Sometimes it will. So just get used to that. Uh, and y itself is going to represent various things. y could re represent a height, h or it could represent a distance, d, or it could re represent an angle, theta, which is a really strange concept since we're used to seeing theta over in this position, aren't we? So let's jump into an example at this point. But just, I bring this up, I introduce it this way to really emphasize that keep in mind everything that you've learned about sinusoids because it all applies. All right. Um, oh, before I do a first example, let me mention that on this website that you see here, and I have a link to it on the class website, you can find several GeoGebra animations that you can load from within your web browser that show some examples of sinusoidal motion. So I'm not going to go through all of them here, but let me just show you one of them right away. Um, a spring is a very common example of sinusoidal motion. If you look at the little red mass at the end of the spring, notice that it speeds up and it slows down and it goes up and down, up and down in this periodic fashion. And rather than get into the details too much of the, of the graph you're seeing, I'm just going to ask that you observe it for a moment and see if you can correlate what the sinusoid graph is telling us about the spring itself. Um, I do have to point out that notice that the horizontal axis represents time here. So we're not suggesting that that red ball is you know, actually moving in a wave-like motion in space. Um, remember, the horizontal axis represents time, not some physical dimension. So I invite you to play with those on, on your own. I think that'll help you get a sense of sinusoidal or, or simple harmonic motion. And again, there's a website. It's also linked on the class website. Here's our first example. OK, I chose that picture because I found it kind of humorous. Um, but in any case, we're going to deal with a child who is pulled back on a swing 30 degrees from vertical and then released. And we are told that it takes the child four seconds to swing all the way in one direction and then back to her original position. So the question, what is the period of the child's motion? And what equation models the child's motion? Well, let's clear up some room here. Um, the first question is meant to be uh, a, a little bit of a primer for the second question. What is the period? 
realistically, I'm probably not going to ask you that on a, on a test, really. Or I might. But if I do, it's really setting us up to do the second part. So the period is actually, believe it or not, told to us in the, in the question. It's four seconds. Um, remember the definition of a period, how long it takes for something to complete one cycle. So my answer to that would be that the period equals four seconds. But the reason I made its own question is because I wanted to remind you of a formula that we use for period. Remember that the basic period is 2 pi, but um, that b parameter in the sinusoid equation affects the period, and it affects it counterintuitively. So instead of multiplying it by b, we divide it by b. I hope that all sounds familiar, and, and really the absolute value of b. So as long as I'm pointing that out, why don't we go ahead and calculate what b is? And, and I'll point out, by the way, that this is what the book uses as omega, and, and any physics or engineering book would also call it omega. But I don't want to fight that battle right now. Let's just call it b, because you're used to that. Hopefully, you can see that with a little manipulation of that fraction, we could get b equals 2 pi over 4 or pi over 2. And if I wanted to, due to those absolute value bars, I could make it negative if I want, but you know, I don't want to complicate things. So let's say that's our b value. All right, um, let me proceed from here. Rather than jumping to the rest of the equation, let me draw a diagram. And this is the way that I found over the many years and many failed attempts to explain this concept to students. I found that this works best. So let's, let's kind of come up with a diagram of what's going on. So this is my little stick model of a child. And this child is pulled back 30 degrees. Back implies that that's kind of a negative 30 degree direction. So let me just pull this back 30 degrees. And let's say that this child is at negative 30 degrees. But you know what? I'm going to um, convert that to radians. That is pi over 6. That's the standard we should be used to. So I'm going to say that this angle over here is negative pi over 6. And likewise, there's an angle over here on this side that is positive pi over 6. OK, I didn't draw that perfectly, but you get the idea. Um, here's how I would approach it. At time t equals 0, the child starts at, at this backwards 30 degrees, or backwards pi over 6. So this is where the child is at time t equals 0. And it takes four seconds for the child to swing all the way over to here and back. So with that in mind, where is the child going to be, uh, or, or at what time will the child be over here? Well, I hope you're thinking if it takes four seconds to go over and back, I hope you're thinking, hmm, that must mean two seconds right here, right? And likewise, that must mean one second right here. And furthermore, if the child goes one second, two second, and then returns, three seconds is also going to be at this position, right? And then four seconds. So let me write those two additional ones, and I think that's going to be enough for us to get the sense of what's going on here. Again, if you look in the book or just about any other source, you're going to see that there are many different ways to approach this, but this is the one, again, that I find students seem to grasp the best in my experience. So I'd say let's draw a picture of what's going on. Let's, let's graph this angle with respect to time. And the first weird thing is that theta is not going to be over here. Our angle theta is going to be the dependent variable. Theta is the actual angle of the swing, which again, may be negative pi over 6. It may be pi over 6 or anywhere in between. So theta is telling us where is this angle at any point in time. So that's theta on the vertical axis, and t is on the horizontal axis. t will always be on the horizontal axis. And notice that when t equals 0, theta was negative pi over 6. So on this axis, let me say that's negative pi over 6. I'll go ahead and anticipate that I'll want a positive pi over 6 up here. And right now, if t equals 0 and theta is negative pi over 6, I'm going to put a big dot right there. I always like to just graph a full period next. So I'm going to say after four seconds, one, two, three, four seconds, t or, or theta will also be negative pi over 6. I'm going to fill in the rest of the dots. When t equals 2, it's going to be positive. Theta is going to be positive pi over 6. 
And again, it's going to take you a little while to get used to putting theta on the vertical axis. I fill in two more points. When t equals 1 and when t equals 3, theta will be at 0. And we're starting to see our sinusoid emerge. We're saying, oh, I know how this works. OK, so pause, study that, see if you believe it. I'm going to copy this onto a new page and continue. Um, so let me copy all this relevant information and go to a new page here and paste it. And let's continue. I'm hoping from here you're, you're feeling pretty comfortable. Are you thinking sine or cosine here? Well, the fact that this does not go through the origin, that's what's going to tell me that theta is a function of t, that I'm going to want to use the cosine function. And the fact that it does not start up top and go downward, the fact that it starts down and goes up, tells me that I'm going to want a negative sign in here, right? Can you see what the amplitude's going to be? Well, here it is. Negative pi over 6 is the amplitude. And only one more thing to do. Remember, it's t that goes in here, not x. And the last thing to do is to put that b value that we calculated right here, right? So that's going to be pi over 2. Now, again, if you're looking at that and feeling a little bit uncomfortable, that's pretty much standard. It happens every year. You'll just need to power through it and, and ask your good questions, get through your misunderstandings, and, and come to office hours or ask in class. All right, so I will point out that um, it is definitely worth graphing our equation. So I already did that ahead of time to save a little bit of time. So there, I've already typed it into the calculator. I know that the period was 4, so I set my window settings. If, if this t, remember that's really t, right? If that's 12 seconds, that means I should expect to see three full cycles, four seconds each. And I do. I see there's one full cycle there, two full cycles there, three full cycles. And again, here's negative pi over 6, or negative 30 degrees. Here's positive pi over 6. OK, let's do, um, let's, see, let's do one more example. I'll try to make it quick. Uh, it's involving a Ferris wheel. And we're talking about a Ferris wheel with a 32-foot radius spinning at 2 RPM rotations per minute. The lowest point of the Ferris wheel is 13 feet above the ground. What equation models how high off the ground a rider will be t seconds after reaching the 3 o'clock position, rotating clockwise? What will be the rider's height after 50 seconds? That's a mouthful, I will admit. So let me go ahead and um, go to a pre-made picture that I had set up. Um, this Ferris wheel has a radius of 32 feet. Uh, and let me point out here, just in this motion, um, notice that as I spin this, if you focus on the height of the rider, don't worry about how far left or right the rider is designated by that little flower, but focus on the height off the ground. And notice that that height is going up and back down, and back up and down. And so if we start at this 3 o'clock position here, 3 o'clock on an analog clock, um, and we are spinning um, clockwise, as I was there a moment ago, uh, we have to envision that. I'm going to put a little arrow to say clockwise. And um, again, this radius is 32 feet. 32 feet up, 32 feet down. And we'll just assume my units are feet. And furthermore, the lowest point here is, we said, how high? Um, 13 feet above the ground. So there's the 32 feet and the 13 feet. And right now, at time t equals 0, the rider is right here. And how long to do a full circle? I've disguised it a little bit two rotations per minute. That means one rotation every 30 seconds, right? So that means it'll take 30 seconds to do a full rotation. That means that after 15 seconds, the rider will be here. And um, 7.5 seconds right here, 7.5 seconds right here. But you know what? I'm, I'm just going to kind of wing it from here. Let's do it this way. I'm going to use green for my graph this time. At time t equals 0, here's my time axis. And at time t equals 0, move this up a little bit. Um, at time t equals 0, the rider is right here, this height off the ground. Remember, I'm looking at the height here. Not, and I don't worry about left or right position. And if the rider is going clockwise, if the rider is going this way, the rider starts going downward, right? So 
Um, that means that after 7.5 seconds, the rider is going to be at this height. After another 7.5 seconds, I'll go ahead and label that one 15, the rider is going to be right here, right? Over on the picture. So that would be back up to this value. Um, and after another 7.5 seconds, the rider's back up or way up top. And then another 7.5 seconds. I know I'm running out of room here. I hope you're following along. That was 30 seconds. Apologize for the poor quality of this picture here, but I hope I'm getting my point across that the rider's going to look like this. OK? I'm going to draw that again. That wasn't very good. But we see that this one looks more like a sine wave. And I'm going to fairly quickly come up with that equation just for time's sake. Again, I hope you're following along. I'm going to go ahead and clear off the, the picture here and come up with that equation. And I, again, I'm going to trust that you're getting pretty good at this. Um, again, this distance off here, I kind of wish I hadn't deleted that picture. But that was 32 feet radius plus an additional 13 feet. So that was. 45 feet to the middle position. And do you remember what this was? That's basically the radius of the, uh, of the wheel, right? So that's the, the 32 feet. So that's going to be the amplitude. Again, relatively quickly, I'm going to say that the height as a function of t is the 32 foot amplitude um, sine. But you know what? I need a little negative sign in there. I'm going to sneak it in there because because the sign doesn't do this, the sign goes downward first. That's why I need that negative sign. Um, oops, I forgot to calculate my b value. Let me do that in a moment. I'm going to put t. And I, notice that this whole sine wave has been elevated by 45. So that's going to result in a plus 45. Let me real quickly calculate the b value. Um, the period was 30 seconds, we said. And we said that that formula was 2 pi over absolute value of b. Therefore, b equals, if I'm going with just the positive value, 2 pi over 30 or pi over 15. That completes my equation. I, I'm trying to rush to keep the video from being too long, but I hope I'm not completely losing you. That is my equation. Once again, you really do want to, um, to type that into a calculator and make sure that that makes sense. Um, notice here I'm going to uh, a maximum time of 60 seconds. So if there's 30 seconds per period, I, I should expect two full cycles, and that's exactly what I get. Um, the height, the middle of the wheel is 45 feet tall, which is where this line is, and again goes down 32 feet and then back up 32 feet above the middle line, and there is one period. All right, I hope I haven't lost you. I hope you've at least got the sense of how this works. Here are your two to try. You know the drill. Um, notice on the second one, I tried to help you out a little bit. I highlighted some things that are a little bit different than what I did in the example. So see if you can make sense out of how that applies. Pause the video, please. OK, here are the solutions. This is for the first one. Notice that I've shown you the calculation for period and the b value. And there's our final equation for the wrecking ball problem. Uh, on to the Ferris wheel problem. There it is. I have a little diagram. Um, you may be a little surprised that that one was a negative sign also. You may have thought, wait a minute, it's counterclockwise. So doesn't that mean it's positive? Well, in my original example, we started over here and went clockwise. And that means that the height started going down. This one starts over here, but it goes counterclockwise, the height still starts by going down. So we still have a negative sign there. All right, I expect that at least a few of you will be coming to office hours or at least bringing some good questions to class when we continue simple harmonic motion.